hello, today let's talk about Fuse newly announced, newly released uh, portable audio player model M11S. And actually it's returned back to the basics, it's, uh, it can be considered as an upgrade of the f first uh, uh, model in the M11 line, uh, just plain M11. And uh, since that uh, Fuse released uh, a bunch of different models, M11, M11 Pro, M11 Plus, uh, AKM and ESS version, also there were some limited uh, editions. And I'm actually a fan of uh, regular M11, I used it for many years, it was my on-the-go player. I liked it for a lot of features and I was waiting for some uh, upgrade in the most affordable segment, but if you're following the uh, modern news in the personal audio, you probably aware that uh, entry-level player segment is basically dead. There are, there are really few new releases and it was cannibalized by different Bluetooth receivers, portable uh, digital tonal converters and other stuff. So in this segment uh, about $200 we have a few players basically that are on the market for quite a long uh, period of time. And then we have a noticeable gap up to $500 segment. But in $500 segment there is a kind of life. Uh, uh, Hybia released R5 uh, second edition that I reviewed recently. And now Fio decided to release M11S. Actually, it has a lot of uh, potential, even uh, based on the specs. It uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 and runs Android 10, meaning that it's uh, pretty fast and snappy. It has 720p screen. It has, uh, it's built with uh, ESS 9038Q2M digital tonal converters and OPA as op amps. So, as you can understand, M11 Plus uses a bit more advanced digital tonal converter and uh, amplification. So here we getting simpler, a bit simpler components, but price is also lower. So it prices $500, basically the same as it was for M11, but probably last few years we seen uh, huge inflation, so we can consider that this model is uh, actually cheaper. Uh, it delivers about 170 milliwatts uh, of power for 32 ohms load from the single-ended output, but for the balanced output it's up to 670 milliwatts. So if you need more power, actually balanced out is for you. But uh, uh, speaking ahead, actually single-ended output it's also more than enough for a lot of in-ear monitors. And work time uh, announced up to 15 hours and in practice you'll get from uh, uh, 13 to 14 hours depending on the load and the usage scenarios from the balanced output of course lower, from the single-ended output you're getting more. Actually I uh, suspect that uh, switching to the Snapdragon uh, gave additional uh, lifetime here. Of course, it supports Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, quick charge and all that modern features. Anyway, let's have a closer look. As you can see, package is uh, made in same design as it was uh, before for all previous few models, but uh, this time it's more bit more affordable model, so package is also slightly simpler. We're removing this outer sleeve and here is basically regular cardboard tray with warning underneath that they already applied uh, protective film from factory, so you don't have to apply another one. Also you're getting player itself, silicone case actually also nice to have it, and, and actually here everything is pretty simple, so you, you'll get USB Type-C cable and that's it. As you can see accessory set is basic, but uh, actually it's uh, pretty decent for this player. So you, of course it would be nice to have a laser case, but uh, it's obvious that few fought really hard to save every single cent in this model. Uh, I mean in pr uh, to reduce the price uh, for the consumer, because inflation of uh, last few years is really high. In terms of design, it definitely reminds the M11 Plus, with one exception, it's a bit smaller. So if we compare size, it's almost the same in terms of thick 
and uh, wheat. So let me show it on more bright background. But it's uh, about one centimeter shorter, so it makes it a bit more pocketable. It's also a bit lighter, but difference is not huge. And as you can see, Fio continued to exploit the similar design patterns in the all models. Hexagonal buttons, so here is power button on off and LED indicator. Here is a custom button, you can select what feature you want to assign here. And this time they made the volume control a bit simpler. It's not a sliding volume control like it was here, it's just a regular uh, top-down buttons. But in general it works pretty well. Here we've got three buttons for playback control and regular micro SD slot. I really like that they decided not to use some tray or something like that, so just a regular slot for micro SD cards, it's basically what everyone need and like. And on the bottom there are different outputs, so as you can see this one is the most universal, it works as single-ended line out and headphones output, and also with the adapter it can be used as an uh, coaxial out. USB Type-C, it can be used for charging, it can be used to use the player itself as digital tonal converter, to connect external digital tonal converter, access internal memory and uh, SD card, so basically all features that we used to see in modern players. Also, there are two balanced uh, outputs, so this one is 2.5 mm just for headphones, and this one is Pentacon, it can be used both for the headphones output and uh, for the line out. So, finally we are getting balanced line out, if you want to connect it to some balanced amplifier, you will need just a cable. And uh, bigger part of uh, front panel occupied with screen. It's uh, 5 inch 720p and actually pretty nice screen with good viewing angles, it's uh, pretty responsive to touch, uh, also thanks to the fast uh, CPU inside of course. Maybe it's not something stellar in terms of modern smartphones, but for the player it's uh, really good. Uh, nice uh, amount of brightness to, to be visible under the sunlight, uh, viewing angles, colors and so on. Of course uh, I like that uh, uh, bevels around the edges are pretty small bezels, sorry, not bevels, bezels. And as you can see, in terms of design, it's using familiar FIO design language. I really like it, and if you like it, you also will enjoy it, but if you don't like it, so taste matters, but in general, it's pretty convenient, feel, fit, uh, feels really solid in hand, so basically, in terms of exterior, it's also pretty well done. In terms of firmware, it's really similar to previous generation of FIO players, so if you're familiar with it, you can skip this part using the timestamp that I will add to the description. But if you are new to FIO players, so let's uh, have a look what is the, what we've got here. Basically, it's Android 10 with uh, Google Play Store available. FIO added separate application for technical support, here you can check for online firmware update, read frequency asked questions, quick start guide, online feedback, contacts. So basically main thing here of course is firmware updater. And also there is a bunch, there are a bunch of controls here in this drop down. So selector of uh, modes, G I will show what is it a bit later. Uh, gain, phone out and uh, for the balanced and regular output should it be headphones output and or line out. In vehicle mode, I kind of like this feature, I don't use it, uh, but if you connect it to your car audio system, you can connect it to your uh, electricity if, uh, and uh, if you start the engine, player will boot up automatically. Auto DSD upsampler improves treble a little bit by upsampling everything to DSD before feeding to the digital tonal converter, but it consumes battery noticeably, so I prefer to keep it off. And screen rotator, night mode, it's all the rest things. Also, Fio put a bunch of things into the settings, of course, and here is also mode selector. So, Fio implemented different scenarios, they gathered them into one uh, menu. 
because in old M11, for example, it was scattered in different places and it was pretty unusual. But here they all are listed here. Android and pure music mode, they are about the same. It's uh, always running just Android, but in pure music mode, instead of standard Android launcher, you will get only few player. It, it, it doesn't uh, give any benefits actual in terms of battery life or sound quality, but uh, it helps you to avoid accidentally getting to the, the Android desktop. So if you want just music, you can use it. And USB digital to analog converter mode, Bluetooth receiver and AirPlay, they all basically do the what is written here. So you activate it and here is USB digital to analog converter mode. Here is volume, it's waiting for connection, it will show sample rate here. And uh, also here you can toggle to, for example, to the Bluetooth receiver mode. Here you can return to Android and here some basic settings can be adjust audio display and you can exit this uh, focused mode i kind of like how they implement it also audio settings uh, so some features are same uh, with drop down what should do 3.5 millimeter and 4.4 millimeter output spd out uh, how to play back dsd gain three levels Actually nice to have. I like that three level gain became more and more standard. Low pass filter mode. All filters that are available in this uh, digital tonal converter. Bluetooth audio encoder. You can select what codec you will uh, you'd like to see here. LDC encoder. Actually you can see what is uh, uh, what you want to optimize. And as usual actually Audio quality with highest bitrate works not really reliably, at least for me, with any devices. I have no luck. And they have adaptive uh, quality too. And also same for LHDC, so you can see they have a really uh, serious uh, uh, LHDC support. Even special mode with low bitrate optimized for low latency. And channel balance, all to DSD and should volume at line out be adjustable or not. And also there are a few additional settings in the display and other things like what buttons should be enabled during lock and so on. But of course main application here is Fio Music. It's familiar player, you can install it uh, to your Android uh, or you get it with uh, player itself. So on this screen uh, that uh, first, uh, that's shown during the first launch, here is search. And settings will show a bit later. Playlists, local music and media server. Also re recent player, most played and recently added. So as, as you can see, almost your all media library uh, present at one screen. On the playlists you get uh, favorites or you can create custom ones. So swipe to go back. Local music you can see all songs in one list. Here is by artists, uh, by uh, albums, as you can see scroll is pretty fast, by genre and of course folders. Here you can uh, adjust some settings uh, about, like sorting and as usual you can select uh, files, remove them, add to playlist and so on and so forth. On the now playing screen you can, can uh, also do a lot of things, so here is the menu where you can navigate to different parts, equalizer, search, so as you can see there are a lot of different uh, ways to get to different features. Search for lyrics and album arts online, delete song, add to favorite, play order, add to playlist uh, and so on. So let's move it back and here in settings you can log in to some account, actually have no idea what it should be doing, need to probably ask Fio. Equalizer is basic linear equalizer with different uh, presets. Fio link, nice feature to control it remotely, play this player or other players. Also here Fio control allows you to control different Fio accessories connected to this player and the theme allows you to uh, do some basic tweaking background, uh, cover and so on. So I like to activate spectrum display and I like 
no i like this style so you can tweak uh, a little bit how it should be look scan for music wi-fi music transfer sleep timer and language uh, reset database about and exit and in the settings some additional playback settings and all uh, obfuscated settings have even explanation icon as you can see in terms of firmware it's uh, pretty modern it's pretty robust snappy i didn't experience any issues with firmware but you know my usage scenario is really basic i just listen music from the micro sd card and a bit of streaming of course i'm not uh, utilizing some complex scenarios like gaming on my player or downloading torrents or something like that so in basic scenarios it works uh, really well for me and of course about the sound, similar set of chips used in some FIO products and some models from the other companies, but uh, let's keep in mind that uh, player uh, differs from digital tonal converter for example uh, by having own battery power supply, also here used uh, some FPGA technologies to improve the signal, so having similar and maybe some other tweaks of course, uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say is that having same chips and not always means having same sound actually uh, it's vice versa it's really uh, not often when similar chips give similar sound at least from my experience and here Fio created a natural balanced sound signature with slight uh, hint of added weight at the lower part of sonic spectrum and slightly added energy in the uh, higher frequencies that means that sound is pretty technical but at the same time uh, slightly colored towards the fun side so basically it's a balance between let's name it mass market signature and audiophilic signature player no, is not trying to be focused on the micro contrast or uh, uh, give you some really fun uh, sound it's uh, balancing in between this uh, different types of signature and at the end it gives it gives a pretty pleasant listening experience with uh, like nothing is go nothing goes wrong uh, sense so bass is deep it's controlled well with slight hint of added weight and uh, with good textures and resolution you know it's even dull to say about all that stuff uh, companies like fio has tons of experience and it's really unlikely that they could do something wrong in terms of uh, technical uh, things it's always a matter of different uh, balance uh, like uh, giving a bit of extra coloration uh, putting some accents and so on so here they uh, didn't uh, and make uh, accent at the resolution or trying to make uh, bass super fa fast and snappy instead there is a hint of a slight slight hint of added warmth that uh, makes everything a bit more full-bodied and it sounds uh, pretty pleasant and enjoyable but it's not like super fast type of low frequencies with focus on the tiniest nuances and first example it's signature bass line from the pink floyd money it sounds really engaging thanks to that uh, hint of added warmth bass is really well rendered and sounds really pleasant and actually second example track is another signature bass line let's go back it's another one by the dust uh, by queen also pretty uh, pleasant pretty fun enjoyable and uh, engaging representation of low frequencies mids are really typical in terms of uh, modern performance of ess uh, digital tonal converters technical but not over focused on the micro contrast with uh, really good three-dimensional staging not something stellar not super expanded uh, or something like that but at the same time with good instruments positioning with enough air between instruments and so on not super focused on the micro contrast and because of that not uh, highly critical for the quality of material but of course uh, less issues uh, tracks will have more enjoy enjoyment you'll get and uh, there is no noticeable coloration on the mid frequencies uh, on the lower mids there is a slight slightly uh, added weight but it's uh, if it disappears as we uh, moving towards the middle mids and higher and uh, actually what is recorded you will get uh, but uh, with good dynamics with proper weight distribution and so on 
and as a first example for the mid frequencies it's a pretty complex track it's a snarky puppy live uh, and it it has a lot of instruments uh, interesting vocal pretty decent quality of records so it requires a nice technical source uh, but at the same time not too monitoring or analytical and actually it's all about this player so that's what you'll get and that uh, makes this track sound uh, really pleasantly and uh, one of my favorite tracks it's alan parsons project la sagrada familia first introduction track from their uh, album dedicated to Antonio Gaudi and uh, this track has uh, interesting intro with a uh, 3D effect uh, that uh, this player delivers really well and then uh, slow uh, narration and then when fast part starts it sounds also really pleasant thanks to the uh, uncolored representation of mid frequencies it's not sounding too sharp and analytical to lose uh, liveliness and it's not too color to lose some details or technical performance here. And uh, treble, it's actually pretty energetic. Uh, of course, I'm not saying that it has a boosted treble, it's just putting additional energy to the treble area. Attacks and decays are re a bit on the faster side of things, so that uh, sounds uh, clean, crisp, uh, with a slight hint of added sharpness, but not too aggressive, at least to my ears. If you're sensitive to treble, maybe it could be different for you. It's definitely not the, tre not the player with uh, softened treble or with comfortable treble. Extension is really good, uh, but layering is like uh, just uh, okay. It's not superb by any matter. But it's uh, typical for this uh, price tire and probably that's what we should expect. And that would uh, leave some space for more advanced players. In general, uh, treble gives a really nice overtone saturation uh, and airness thanks to slightly boosted manner of uh, representation. And first example, it's uh, Sister Moon by Sting. Actually, Sting tracks are perfect for testing records, uh, sorry, treble. And uh, they have a lot of percussions, a lot of uh, really high-pitched instruments, and they are usually recorded and mastered pretty well. And this one is not an exception, and it sounds uh, like uh, good. Not perfect, but good. And second example, pretty complicated in terms of treble, it's uh, Hiromi Uehara, Indulgence lot of uh, overtones in the treble area this player lacks uh, a bit of layering of course to separate all that but still uh, thanks to the good technical performance and in general energetic treble it gives a nice uh, sense of realism and overtone saturation actually screen is getting a bit warm during playback probably it's some uh, heat dispersion by the chipset and amplification I think that it's okay, but some people are really critical for that, I don't know why. Speaking about the pairings, of course from the balanced output you'll get enough power to drive vast majority of uh, headphones and earphones. Background is really nice and black, but with Wi-Fi turned on with super sensitive in-ear monitors, I hear a slight background noise in the, at the right channel. But there is a simple solution for that, I just used single-ended output, it's enough for uh, sensitive earphones. Actually, there is no, no difference in terms of quality between the outputs, unless of course your headphones require more power. In this case, of course, you'll get a difference in sound quality, it's pretty obvious thing. And uh, in general, with uh, sensitive in-ear monitors, background uh, noise is at the really low level, so okay in this, uh, in this aspect. Speaking about the compersions, actually there is not much models left in this uh, price segment, so Shanlink M6 uh, and uh, their updated version are on the warmer side of things, offering a bit more colored sound. Also, previous generation of FIO M11, it's more thinner, more analytical, here you'll get better body and more natural sound because of that, so it's uh, more dynamic also. Uh, all, also BTR7, because someone will ask about it, it sounds a bit more focused on the micro contrast and a bit more analytical, bit more lightweight uh, in terms of sound representation. And uh, M11 Plus... Uh, 
new ESS version will give you better dynamics, will give you better representation of emotions and uh, better defined treble with uh, better layering. So in this case it's basically uh, improvement is proportional to the sound quality. Uh, Hybis R5 uh, 2 second version actually a bit more tight, a bit more impactful, a bit more focusing on the tightness of sound and uh, slightly more weighty in the A-class uh, A amplification mode. Uh, there are two other players uh, coming, it's uh, Ibasu DX170 and uh, Hybis RS2 that will be pretty interesting in terms of uh, comparisons, uh, they are the direct rivals here, but I didn't test them yet. Also we've got uh, Kane N3 uh, Pro in this price tire, but Kane has so many different sound uh, colorations that I think it's uh, really uh, different device for those who uh, doesn't want Android but want uh, for example different types of uh, tube sound and other types of signature. So to summarize everything really I'm really glad to see the new player in this uh, relatively affordable uh, price segment. It's uh, pretty good in terms of streaming. I even tested Apple Music uh, and it, uh, it, it works. And uh, it gives you all modern features thanks to the good uh, chipset and at the same time sound quality is also pretty pleasant. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a nice day.